You like .NET MAUI, but XAML, not so much. I've got good news for you. You can write your entire UI in C Sharp with a set of C Sharp markup extensions that allow you to do it in a more fluent way. Let's check out what that's all about. The C Sharp markup extensions have been an initiative by Vincent, who is my fellow Dutchie, um, and he has been doing this also for like Uno, WPF, and all kinds of other platforms. He has big plans for it, I think, um, and a lot of people seem to like it, but for .NET MAUI, it's living inside of the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit for now. And under my previous video about the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, there was a couple of responses about like, hey, I like to write my UI in code. How do I do that? Do I use Comet? Do I use this? What, what are my options? So that is what this video is all about. Um, a quick note on Comet, which is a separate uh, initiative initiative, which is, um, you know, the C Sharp markup extensions will allow you to kind of like replace the XAML, do not use the XAML, but do the exact same things, um, but with a more fluent syntax, we'll see that in a little bit. What Comet does is basically rip out the whole XAML layer, the whole MVVM layer, and replace that with something that is called uh, a MVU style, so that also has a very different paradigm of um, even updating the UI itself and all those things, so that's something completely different. Um, a lot of people are interested in that as well. Let me know if that's something that interests you and I will make more videos on that. Please let me know in the comments. But for now, let's dive into the C Sharp markup extensions. So for this video, I did a little bit of preparation work. Uh, this is basically a file new .NET MAUI application. It is running in Visual Studio 2022, the preview version, because when I'm recording this, um, .NET MAUI is still in the preview bits, um, a release candidate two to be exact. Um, but you know, it will be out soon and then you can actually use it in Visual Studio stable. .NET MAUI will be GA and the world will rejoice. But um, the, back to the C Sharp mark, markup extensions, part of the like the file new template is this page, right? And if I run it on, on Windows, doesn't really matter. It should look the same across all platforms. When I run this on Windows, um, you will see the little .NET bot with a little counter, a couple of labels, nothing too fancy, but it's just a layout to get you started, right? And what I did is I created this. Here you can see it, click me, um, it all works. What I did is recreate this layout in C sharp, um, which you can totally do today, right? Everything that you can do in XAML, you can do in C sharp. So let's go to my project. Let's go to main page C sharp, I've called it. Um, and here you can see the exact same thing, but now in C sharp. So um, you can see it is a whole bunch of new objects and setting properties and doing all these kinds of stuff. And it's well, people say that XAML is verbose, but this is this is much more verbose if you ask me. Um, so, you know, there's a lot, a lot happening here. And this is not something that you are really, you know, this doesn't really make a lot of people happy. So um, with the C-sharp markup extensions, you can do this in a much more fluent way. Now, I'll be honest at this point, I like my XAML. I do everything in XAML. I don't mind that it's a little bit verbose. It helps me get a mental image of how the UI is going to look like. Um, so I do most of my stuff in XAML. And actually I looked into um, C-sharp markup because you wanted to see it. And um, so I'm not a real expert there. Um, I'm going to show you what you can do. Maybe if someone with more experience looks at this and is like, eh, Gerald, you can do things a little bit better. You can do things a different way. Totally fine. I'm here to learn. Please let me know down in the comments. But, um, you know, I'm going to do whatever I found out uh, during a, a quick um, investigation of C Sharp Markup. So please forgive me if it isn't perfect. It's just for you so that you know what is out there and um, how to start digging in yourself, basically. So let's go back to Visual studio here and um, this is this is just in C sharp code so um, just to show you that it's the exact same um, run the Windows one again I added it to um, my app I added it to the menu so here I have this flyout menu and I can switch between hello world and hello world from C sharp and you can see apart from a, a little text thing here it's exactly the same thing now let's do this in the C sharp markup extensions so um, let's close this and what we first need to do is add the community tool Toolkit markup extensions package to our project. So let's click uh, right click on our project right here. And then I'm going to say manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to search for community toolkit.maui. And actually, I should search for community toolkit.maui.markup. Um, so that's the one that you want to have. It's pre release right now. So make sure you click that include pre release uh, checkbox in the um, NuGet Explorer. Um, then you can say install and it will install it 
pretty quickly. There we are, um, because you know it's it's not a big package. We get uh, welcomed by this readme, and one thing that we kind of like want to know is um, that we need to initialize this in our Maui program in the generic host builder. So let's copy this use Maui community toolkit markup line um, and go to our Maui program.cs and we can just add this here to our builder dot use Maui community toolkit markup, um, which initializes this package for us. We should add the right using so that it understands and voila, now we're done. The initialization is done. We can now start using the um, C sharp markup extensions for dot and Maui. So if we go back to the readme real quick, um, here's the links to, we have the docs for this as well. So you can go to the docs. Uh, we have a GitHub repository because all of this is open source, of course. So um, definitely go check that out for more information. I'll also link um, these down in the video description below. Now, what I want to do, so I have the main page not example, the main page C sharp. I'm going to go to my project. I'm going to right click, do add new class, and I'm going to name this one main page C sharp markup. So uh, we're going to recreate again the same page, but now we're going to do it with the C sharp markup extensions. So let's do public. Let's make this a content page as well, um, just to make it li in line with the rest of the code. Let's make this a, a file scoped namespace. There we go. And here for the usings, let's add the using community toolkit dot Maui dot markup um, because it's all implemented as um, extension methods and extension methods are a little bit harder to discover. Um, you will have to know the name and then the IntelliSense will suggest you the right using. Um, so you can better turn that around at the right using and then in the IntelliSense you will see all the extension methods that you can use. And it's quite a lot because that's the way how these C sharp markup extensions work. Um, so here let's make a constructor public main page C sharp markup. And in this constructor, we're basically going to do our whole thing. Um, actually, to make this a little bit more um, easy, let's take this uh, C sharp code thing because it's still going to be C sharp code and dock this here on the right side. So we can kind of like see what is going on, right? What we what the thing is that we actually need to do. Um, so we're still going to need this count. So let's add that to our class um, because we are going to use that for our counter that's going to work with the button. And then we have a scroll view and a vertical stack layout. Now, let's start with that one. So let's, uh, I think the scroll view we still need to do var scroll view is new scroll view. Um, so let's do that. And then at the end, we can say content is scroll view, right? So that's that's going to be our content is the property for our page. And that's where we're going to set the whole thing. Uh, the scroll view can only have one um, child. So let's say var vertical stack layout. So that's going to be our vertical stack layout. And the stack layout is going to have all of our other stuff, right? So here we can say is new vertical stack layout. Boom, we have that one. Uh, but actually, let's make this the same as here. And we're going to say um, spacing. So the spacing, I couldn't find a spacing uh, method for the C-sharp markup extension. So I think you really need to set the spacing um, like this still. But then for like the padding, you can say dot paddings. And you can set the padding for like all the different things, right? Um, so I'm going to set this for 30. I want it to have 30 on all sides because if you just set it to 30 like this in code, you want to have it 30 like all around. And now we can have this padding on this um, vertical stack layout. Now, the one thing I still need to do is set scroll view dot um, content because it can only have one child is uh, vertical stack layout. And basically now we've set up the basics for our page. But of course, we're not nearly done yet. So what I'm going to do inside of this vertical stack layout, I'm also going to supply the children, uh, children, here we are. And this is a collection of, you know, visual elements, right? So we're just going to get all of our labels in here. Actually, this is not really the C-sharp markup um, um, extensions thing. I could totally have done this on the right side with the C-sharp code as well. Um, but, you know, this just fits more into like how uh, to do this. And also, um, if you look at the right side, so our plain C-sharp code, uh, we'll scroll down a little bit. And if we get to like the counter, the count label, we will have to have a reference to that label to actually, you know, set the text, right? So in this button, we are going to set that count label dot text to the new count, right? Um, so that is something where you need a reference to the label for. And there's an interesting way to solve that um, uh, with the C sharp markup extension. So bear with me, I'm going to show you that next. Now here, I'm going to do new label. And I'm going to set the properties for that. So I want to have this 
um, text hello world. That's just something that we need to set this way. Um, but then with the fonts, there is something interesting again. So um, let's go over here to our font. Um, I can set here fonts. So um, you can see we have all these things, right? We can set the family, we can set the size, we can set bold, we can set italic. Um, and these are all null. So we can just set one of them and the rest will be the default. So um, if we set this to size, it's the only thing we want. We can say 18 and the rest will be the default, right? So um, this just sets only the size and the rest will still be the default. Now for the horizontal options, we can say center, horizontal, and we can see here in the italic sense, that's the same thing as horizontal options is layout options dot center. Well, that's the, exactly the thing we want. So boom, now we have the exact same thing, but it reads kind of like more nicely, at least some people think that. I definitely also think that, you know, if you have to choose between um, writing this in code on the right and writing this in code with the C Sharp markup extensions, then probably the left one is going to be better. So um, actually, I didn't update the text here. Hello from C Sharp markup. Let's fix that, else the demo will fail entirely. So we have this one label. Um, let's go on to the next. And actually, I see the semantic properties here. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I was working with this and I was like, hmm, how am I going to set that? So I went over to the uh, markup extensions uh, repository. I checked out like the issues, the di discussions right there. And the semantic properties have not been implemented at this time. Hopefully, we can fix that soon so that we can also make our apps more accessible by using the C Sharp markup extensions. So we're going to skip over that for a little bit. Um, we can still set that if we really want to, but I'm going to skip over it for now. Um, I don't need to add it to the children right here because we're already doing that here in line. Then the next thing is the count label. So here we go, comma, new label. And the text is going to be, actually, let me copy that. Here we go. Oh, actually, I think I skipped the label here. Uh, we need to do this one, the welcome label. So add the welcome here. And again, a little font size. So boom, font size 18 and I also want to center horizontal and boom we got another label right so this is going nicely let's add another one new label text is I'm scoping is skipping over this a, a little bit faster right because um, we want to actually get to something interesting here and all the labels you can figure out for yourself so okay this is actually the interesting one so we have the count here let's set again the font to 18, uh, oh, size 18. Um, but this is the label that we actually want to reference, right? Whenever we click the button, we want to update the count here. Um, so, oh, actually we need to do the font attributes. So also let's set the font attributes. We can say bold is true. So now it will set it to bold. Um, and we still need to again do center horizontal. So we can do that. And uh, the interesting thing here is that we need a reference to this label to actually work with it with the button. We can do that by the dot assign. And with the dot assign, we can assign it to a variable. And we can do that by doing a out and then say label and then say count label. So that way, we're just getting a reference to that label through this assign method instead of, you know, placing our label outside of the vertical stack layout, do var new label, um, get that name and, and mix all the things here. We don't want to do that. We want to stay inside of this C sharp markup extension world, right? So we have this count label. Now let's see how we can use that with the button. So let's go to a new button that's next. And the button will have the text is click me. And what do we have else? We again have some font attributes. And so let's say font bold is true. And then we can say sender horizontal. Um, but now we still need to invoke that click thing, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we can say dot invoke. And we have a lambda expression that we can use to actually um, reference anything by this button. So we can say the button is going in our button um, instance, and we can say b dot clicked. That's the thing that we do. Of course, everything that you see here, you also have like dot bind, so you can do data binding. You can do all those things in a fluent way as well. Um, go check out the docs for that. But I'm just gonna go with the events for here. Um, dot clicked plus is, and I'm just going to do this in line. You can definitely also create a separate method for this, which is probably better. But I'm going to do it in line here. Um, sender and event args, which is fine, and we can just define the method thing here. So actually, I can just copy it from this side. Count plus plus the count label. I need to probably, uh, oh, I actually named it the same. So this should work. 
So let's just place that here, count plus plus, count label is, and I can do the semantic screen reader here, right? Because this is just a block of text that I can use. So we can do all the accessible stuff here. Boom, our button is working as well. I think that we just have the image left. So let's do new image. And I'm going to create a new source is new file image source with a file is Let's scroll down here on the right. .net bot .png. And I think we also don't have like properties for the width request and height request or the um, extension methods, I should say. Oops, it's not on the file source. It's on the image. I can't type under pressure when other people are watching. Width request is 250. Height request is 310 and again we can do uh, the center horizontal right so in a fluent way and i think with this we have our layout complete so you can see it's a couple of lines less we're on like 85 here and this is 71 so um, 10 14 lines less so that's already a win right um, and if we do this and we get a little bit of a better overview um you know, it, it, it arguably is more readable. It's like more fluent, new label with a font and center horizontal. Um, and, and with the font and horizontal, we're going to invoke. So, um, you know, this, this can definitely count as more readable. I think if you format it a little bit more nicely, um, then this is definitely better to use. Now, what I'm going to do to show this in our actual um, main page, um, I'm going to have to add this to our app shell. So, app shell and I'm going to create a new shell content here. Actually, if you want to know more about shell, definitely let me know in the comments as well. Um, I'm learning shell a little bit myself. So definitely let me know if that's something you want to learn about. Um, I'm going to add a new entry here, shell content. I need to point this to our main page, C sharp markup type, um, the root C sharp markup, they, those need to be unique. And now whenever I run it on windows, it's going to be a very uneventful demo um, because we should see three times the same page, but they are formatted in code very much differently. So we should see our code in C sharp markup, which looks exactly the same, but it's much more readable in the code. So here we are, the page is coming up. Um, we still have the C sharp one and XAML one, but now let's go to the C sharp mark one. And oh, I think I skipped a, um, a, a property here, a method here, um, but it looks more or less the same, right? So I need that to do that top one so uh, to get it 100% perfect let's check what I missed here um, actually welcome hello world um, font size 18 center horizontal so what did I miss here oh it's it's font size 32 so that's probably why 32 boom let's run this again and um, then we should see the exact same thing let's check it so you don't know so you know I don't lie here we are it looks exactly the same throughout all of these three pages now, like I already mentioned, uh, my mental model works best if I use XAML, but um, people definitely like to use this one. Brandon Minnick is one of them. He created a whole real world app, uh, which is called Git Trends. You can find it on his account, github.com slash brminnick slash Git Trends, which is an app you can download in the app store. And it is entirely written in Xamarin forms at this point, um, but with the C sharp markup extension. So definitely go check that out. And it's open source. So you can also check out the source and how he has solve certain things if that's what you're interested in. Um, it is really amazing to see. Thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. Of course, all the code can be found on a GitHub repository that is linked to this video. Go check it out in the video description below. Please like this video if you've actually liked it and it will spread to more people by the means of the YouTube algorithm um, and then more people can come in and enjoy these wonderful videos. Please check if you, if you have subscribed to this channel already so that the content will come to you instead of you having to go out and search for me. Well, maybe while you're here, um, go check out more .NET Maui content in this playlist right here. Or if you want to know what the community toolkit is that I've actually been mentioning a couple of times, check out this video here. See you for the next video.